Jonathan here. Thanks for joining me as we continue to explore tough but important questions about Catholic beliefs and practices. We're looking at two books. We're looking at the Catechism of the Catholic Church, direct quotes about what they believe and practice, and we're looking at the Bible for answers about these things. In fact, we're using a study to compare the two with tough questions that we've written uh, and we have available for you at trustworthyword.com backslash Catholic. I hope you'll take the time to download it, look more deeply into these things for yourself. Here's an important question. Should we pray to Mary? Should we pray to saints? Should we pray to deceased loved ones? Important definitions. Webster's Dictionary says necromancy is the practice of talking to the spirits of dead people. A medium is a person through whom other persons try to communicate with the spirits of the dead. Oh, here's what the Catholic Catechism says. It says, we can and pray with and to her. It's talking about Mary. The prayer of the church is sustained by the prayer of Mary. The witnesses, especially those whom the church recognizes as saints, constantly care for those whom they've left on earth. Their intercessions is their most exalted service to God's plan. We can and we should ask them to intercede for us and for the whole world. It is a holy and wholesome thought to pray for the dead that they may be loosed from their sins. She offers suffrages for them. Again, the Catholic Catechism. In prayer, the pilgrim church is associated with that of the saints whom, whose intercessions she asks. It's a holy and wholesome thought to pray for the dead that they may be loosed from their sins. She offers suffrages for them. Might have read that one twice. <laughs> the church encourages us to prepare ourselves for the house of death, to ask the mother of God to intercede for us at the hour of our death in the Hail Mary and to entrust ourselves to St. Joseph, the patron of a happy death. The church sustains the hope of believers by proposing the saints to them as models and intercessors. Well, what does the Bible say? Deuteronomy 18, verse 10 through 12 says, There shall not be found among you a medium, remember the definition, that somebody you go to to have increased access or access to those who have died. Or a necromancer. Remember the definition. A necromancer is somebody who interacts, communicates with those who have died. Or in somebody who choirs of the dead. Praying to, talking to the dead. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord is driving them out before you. Do you see the seriousness? An abomination to the Lord. Who? Whoever does these things. What things? Interact, pray to, inquire of, talk to the dead. Whether Mary or whether the saints. Leviticus 19.31 do not turn to mediums or necromancers. Do not seek them out. So make yourselves and so make yourselves unclean by them. I am the Lord your God. Isaiah 8, 19. When they say to you, inquire of the mediums and the necromancers who chirp and mutter, should not a people inquire of their God? Should they inquire of the dead on behalf of the living? 1 Samuel 28, 15, Samuel says to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? What had Saul done? Saul had summoned the spirit of Samuel to talk to him, to interact with him, to pray with him, to inquire of him. Why was that so serious? Well, the Bible's really clear. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, he helps you. If you don't know what to pray, you have the Spirit to intercede for you. The Spirit searches your hearts. Uh, the Spirit intercedes for the saints. If you are a Christian, you have the Holy Spirit within you. So why would we bypass the Holy Spirit to talk to the dead? What about angels? Is it okay to talk to angels? 
I mean, in the Bible, aren't there appearances of angels and people talking to the appearance of angels? What about us? Is it okay to pray to angels? The Catholic Church invokes the angels, their assistants, in the funeral, saying this, May the angels lead you into paradise. She celebrates the memory of certain angels more particularly, St. Michael, St. Gabriel, St. Raphael, and the guardian angels. Beside each believer stands an angel. This is the Catholic Catechism. Beside each believer stands an angel as protector and shepherd, leading him to life. It says the church venerates the angels who help her on her earthly pilgrimage and protect every human being. The Bible does not mention Raphael, and he does not, the Bible does not mention particular guardian angels that are assigned to each believer. And the Bible does not support praying to angels. The only time the Bible, the Bible describes talking to angels is when an angel directly appears. And the angels are not allowed to be bowed down to. They will not receive any form of worship or sacrifice. Why does the book of Tobit, it's in the Catholic Bible, why does the book of Tobit give so much attention to angels compared to any other book of the Bible? The book of Tobit in the Catholic Bible, it's not in the Protestant Bible, but it gives about 10 out of 12 chapters talk a whole lot about angels. Why? No other book of the Bible gives that much attention to angels. Does that concern you about its trustworthiness? Should it? Colossians 2, 16 through 19 warns us, let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism and worship of angels. Romans 1, 22 warns us, they exchanged the truth about God for a lie, and they worshiped and served the creature rather than the creator, who is blessed forever. Anytime we bow down to, we give uh, more attention to, we give our hearts or entrust ourselves to a creature rather than a creator, we are, need to be asking, are we worshiping them? What does the Bible describe? Where does it describe? The Bible. Anywhere in the Bible does it describe praying to Mary, praying to the saints, praying to angels. And why would we talk to angels when we have the Spirit of God within us, to whom we can speak at any time? Is not the God, God the Holy Spirit, much more powerful than the angels? The angels, they're created. We have the Creator with us. Isn't it insulting to ignore the Holy Spirit, whose job is to intercede for us, and instead to speak to created beings to access God? We need to speak directly with the Creator. Why does God give us so many warnings? There are so many more warnings about necromancy. Remember, talking to the dead. Mediums, using other people to inquire of the dead. Why are these warnings there? Do they matter today? Why was Saul's sin? Saul's sin was described, he did not seek guidance from the Lord directly. Why was that so serious? It was a sin for which he died. And when was prayer to Mary, the saints and angels, invented by the Catholic Church? It's not in the Bible. When was that invented? Why was that not in the first 350 years of the early church history? When did that start? Why did it start? Listen, these are important questions. These are tough questions. But I hope, my hope is that you will get into the Bible and see what the Bible says. That's God's breathed out word to us. And if this resource was helpful, I hope you'll like and comment, maybe share this video with others, and maybe go a little bit deeper. A whole lot more questions, important questions, as we do a study, a Bible study of the Catholic Catechism.